came home and my kids were dead. And what I mean more horrible is my wife died in front of me also. On January 13th of 2020, Law enforcement finally made contact with the defendant at 202 Reserve Place in Celebration. Tony, come to the door. Myself and agents stacked at the front door, and we do what we always do. We knock and announce. Tony, talk. Come to the door, please. Tony Tote stated that his wife was asleep upstairs, and he shouted her name. Agents, during their protective sweep, then uh, walked up to uh, the master bedroom to uh, make contact with Megan Tote. Megan. It's four. Right. Megan. One agent and a Osceola County Sheriff entered that room and at that time uh, came upon multiple bodies that were very obviously deceased. A female adult's body was on the bed and two male children were on the floor near the foot of the bed, as well as the family dog, all located in that master bedroom. And they were able to make out that Zoe's body had been wrapped up and was laying on uh, the same bed that Megan Tote was laying on. Anthony Tote is on trial for the heinous murders of his entire family his wife Megan, their three children, and their dog. Toad admitted to drugging everyone before he stabbed and smothered his family one by one. However, now Toad is changing his story and is going to tell the jury how and why he's innocent. Not just that, he's going to point the finger of blame directly at his now deceased wife. The state's main piece of evidence is Toad's detailed confession. But the potentially conflicting facts create an opportunity for the defense to present a different version of events to the jury. As a sole survivor of this tragedy, Toad is the only one who knows exactly what happened inside that house. But will he be able to gain the jury's trust while discrediting his own previous statements? Through her yoga practice, she got introduced to, I guess you want to say, an Eastern religion. Through that religion and her following, also took over her medical outlook. Was there an afterlife component of this religious practice? Yes, there was an afterlife component in which each afterlife, she believed that there was reincarnation. And as they burned the family karma in the current life, they reach the salvation in which they are reincarnated to a better life. And something can be so unbelievable that it must be true. And he's leaning into this idea that he can convince that jury that his story about his wife wanting to go to some extra dimensional space to take the family with her as salvation can be true. But he's got to present it in a way that makes sense to the jury. Have you progressed from talking about the afterlife to talking about what happened to your children and your wife? I had no, no knowledge of it before I came home that day. What was the occurrence that made that day memorable? I came home and my kids were dead. In December of 2019, what was Megan's medical conditions? Megan's medical divisions consisted of neck pain, back pain, hypothyroidism, Lyme disease, heart rate issues, breathing issues. As soon as his attorney sat down and the prosecutor got up, you could literally see his entire posture change. You tighten your lips, your chin comes up, you're defiant in your tone. Megan had gotten diagnosed with Lyme disease as a teen. That was her initial diagnosis, that's correct, that she had exacerbations. Like I had told you before, the diagnosis- My question was a yes or no question. Yes. Tony painted two entirely different pictures of his wife. He painted the picture of a 
helpless, sick woman. She was so sick that she wanted to die. She wanted to take her whole family to this other realm so that she would be free of all this pain. But at the same time, she was the one who plunged a knife into her own abdomen and smothered and stabbed their children. When I looked under the microscope at Megan's liver tissue, I did not see anything that would indicate that she had any kind of hepatitis that was induced by drugs. In your interviews, you describe in detail how you take the lives of each one of your children, correct? That's what the video showed, yes. And you indicated in the video that you began with Zoe, correct? That's correct. And you're sitting here today saying that that's not the case. That is not the case. Megan told me the order she killed the kids. OK. And Zoe was my little angel. That's the first one I went to. So when you get into Zoe's room, what do you see? There's a pillow on her head. There's a hand. And there's covers on top of her. You could see the real emotion during Cross. They're discussing the exact same topics, but no more is he contorting his face or, or crying about the fact that his children were stabbed and suffocated. My testimony today is the fact that Megan killed her kids and killed herself. OK. The world was captivated as this gruesome family murder was uncovered. But how did this once devoted father end up facing life in prison for allegedly killing his own family. In 2019, the Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General, as well as uh, the FBI, were working on this federal investigation jointly for healthcare fraud charges against Tony Tote. The investigation uncovered that Tony was billing for services not rendered, which really entails things like billing for patient visits and treatment on dates that maybe the practice was closed or simply billing for more treatment per week than the patients were receiving. The charges were not minor. So Tony is looking at the potential of years in federal prison, as well as the loss of his uh, license to practice physical therapy. Almost two months had passed since the search warrant was served on Toad's physical therapy practice in Connecticut. Without any communication from him, federal agents issued a warrant for Toad's arrest. Despite the multiple welfare calls, it wasn't until January 13, 2020, while executing the arrest warrant for health care fraud, that federal agents discovered the bodies of the family. I'm not sure what the search warrants did to Tony Tote and his mentality. What I can say is that when we're taking away someone's freedom or we're investigating someone for a federal crime, Typically, they come under um, some serious stress. And those people can react irrationally, and they can react violently. The defendant will please rise. Madam Clerk, if you would please publish the verdict. Verdict as to count one. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree murder as charged in the indictment. Verdict as to count two, count three, count four. Guilty, verdict as to count five. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of cruelty to animals. Anthony Toad finds himself convicted of the atrocious murders of his wife, three young children, and the family dog. The jury was totally focused on the inconsistencies, not between the physical evidence and what he told law enforcement, but the inconsistencies between what he told law enforcement and what he was telling them. It was the defendant who got himself convicted. You, Anthony John Tote, are a destroyer of worlds. Here's a man that thought he could get away with murder, and I don't know if he really feels sorry about what he did. Most people that get charged, even with serious criminal offenses, are not really bad guys. But the guys that are really evil, you, you can like palpably feel it uh, when you meet them. And this guy is one of the rare ones who just sends a chill down your spine. Not one of those lives was less valuable than the others. They were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. <laughs>